This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Hello, good evening to viewers of the Glazov Gang. This is another Daniel Greenfield moment, and I am Daniel Greenfield. Tonight we're going to discuss the 72 virgins, the 90 foot tall 72 virgins. It begins with the story of Ibrahim Bardaya, a Muslim terrorist in Israel who turned 54 and he was still single. So being a Muslim terrorist, he decided to go out and kill some Jews. But Ibrahim wasn't just a violent anti-Semitic racist, he was also lonely. According to Ibrahim's imam, he wanted to die and get his 72 virgins in the afterlife. And he had stayed single to avoid the temptations of earthly women so that he could enjoy the virgins who are 90 feet tall and so quote unquote white that you can see quote unquote the marrow of their bones. In Pakistan, an arrested suicide bomber last year, when asked if he wanted to get married and live a normal life, retorted, I want to die. 72 virgins are waiting for me in paradise. Why should I prefer only one here? Muslim men are encouraged to view their marriages to Muslim women as temporary. A hadith has the hurry virgin admonishing the Muslim wife, do not annoy him, may Allah ruin you. He is with you as a passing guest. Very soon he will part with you and come to us. According to Saudi cleric Muhammad al Munajid, the 90 foot tall Islamic virgins are vastly preferable to actual Muslim women. Whereas the women of the Muslim world may suffer, he said, for days and nights from menstruation from blood for 40 days after childbirth, from vaginal bleeding and from diseases, the women of paradise are pure, unblemished, menstruation free, free of feces, urine, phlegm, and children. This is the Islamic understanding of the relationship between men and women. The ideal woman has no children, has no personality, and hardly even exists at all. And of course, these uh, 90 foot tall Islamic virgins are restricted to tents and locked up, exactly like the ideal Saudi women. They never leave the house, they are hairless, and never get older than their quote unquote tender age. Their skin is so bright that it causes confusion and actually doubles as a mirror so that quote, one can see one's image in her cheek. Unsurprisingly for a death cult, Islamic scholars appear to be obsessed with the bones of these giant women and assure jihadists that, the, that, quote, the marrow of the bones of their legs of their promised virgin brides will be seen through the bones and the flesh. If, that's, if you think that's a little creepy, you're not wrong. But now if you're keeping track, these are 90 foot tall women with blindingly bright transparent skin, visible bones and no biological functions who stay locked up in the house all the time. This is what the ideal Islamic woman looks like. Aside from the bizarre qualities, Islamic paradise is basically a fantasy version of Saudi Arabia or ISIS where women are property. And the 90 foot tall virgins, unlike the real women enslaved in these totalitarian Islamic states, never protest, run away, or commit suicide. But 72 90 foot tall virgins is just a starting point for the aspiring mass mu murdering Muslim terrorists, just like an episode of Oprah, you can always, there's always more. According to Saudi cleric Muhammad Ali Shaniqui, each 90 foot tall virgin comes with 70 virgin servant girls. Also for those Muslim men who insist on marrying earthly women, instead of going straight to the jihadists, polygamists get 70 bright, giant, transparent virgins for every wife that they have. This apparently comes out to a total of 19,604 women. But Muhammad may be selling the martyr short. According to the deputy speaker of the Palestinian Legislative Council, a Hamas leader, Sheikh Ahmad Bahar, there are 500 gates in Islamic paradise, and each of them has 5,000 black-eyed virgins, he says. Brothers, 500 multiplied by 5,000 is 2.5 million. That's one way to get a Muslim terrorist to do math, at any rate, by counting the amount of virgins he can get. So why should a Muslim jihadist settle for the mere pittance of 19,604 women being offered by the Saudis when he can get 2.5 million transparent 90-foot tall virgins from Hamas. And what happens when, when ISIS ups the ante to 10 million virgins and the Taliban counter with 200 million virgins? This becomes kind of a problem for Muslim women since Muslim religious leaders don't seem too happy with the idea of human women in Islamic paradise. For Muslims, the idea of paradise is a place with no women. Muhammad, the original founder of Islam claimed, I was shown the hellfire and that the majority of its dwellers are women. That frees up Muslim men to leave behind their wives in hell for the millions of transparent 90-foot-tall virgins waiting for them in paradise. 
Imam Abu Mudah of Adaridi of Egypt elaborates that out of every 100 rollers of hell, 30 are men and 70 are women. In other words, for every three men in hell, there are seven women. Saudi Sheikh Yahya Yana reassures Muslim men worried that actual human women might ruin their paradise that there are not so many women in paradise. It is mostly men who enter paradise. Muhammad, the original one, urges his followers not to waste time thinking about their wives in paradise. By Allah, a man will have a hundred virgins in a single morning, the notorious rapist vowed. Also, the Prophet of Islam assured his followers of the superiority of the virgins of tender age to human women. Each time he returns to one of them, he will find that she is a virgin again, not like the women in this world. Unlike Saudi Arabia, the Islamic State, there's no need for cost to re restoration surgery. Sheikh Al-Jana also urges Muslim men to stop thinking about human women and focus on the virgins. Where are you lovers of women, he asks. Where are you, you desire these virgins? How many people have lost their promised virgins for the sake of one unveiled woman, he, woman, he exhorts. None of this appears to be terribly flattering to Muslim women who are just meant to pull kitchen duty on earth before heading to hell or their husbands go off to the trillions and trillions of transparent virgins of paradise who on account of their transparent bone marrow are nothing like Muslim women on earth. Still some Muslim women from this world have tried to get to paradise the hard way by murdering non-Muslims to meet the Muslim men who have gone chasing after the 90-foot virgins. Two female Muslim terrorists in Israel claimed that they carried out an attack so that they could die and meet the many handsome male terrorists whose pictures Hamas and Fatah show off after each terrorist attack. But they're in for a tough time in Muslim paradise, unfortunately, no matter how many Jews they kill. On reaching Islamic paradise, they would not only have to compete for attention with the 90-foot tall virgins with mirror bright skins who might accidentally step on them and squash them, but the more handsome Muslim martyrs are only there because they obey the instruction of Islamic preachers to stop, quote unquote, chasing the women of this world who occasionally are so modest as to leave their tents to go grocery shopping. And a differing hadith suggests that instead of getting 72, 19,604, 2.5 million giant 90 foot tall virgins, Muslims only get two. The other 70 women will be, hit, quote again, his inheritance from the people of the hellfire. In plain English, that means men who go to hell will have their wives and daughters passed along to Muslim men in paradise. Much like the way that Muhammad conquered and killed non-Muslims and then gave away their wives and daughters as property to his followers, or the way that ISIS enslaved and distributed Yazidi women to its jihadists, Islamic paradise is supposed to function as an ISIS-style rape camp for women. If Islamic paradise were a real place, the women who reached would find themselves distributed to jihadists in much the same way that the Muslim runaway teenage girls who joined ISIS were. Islamic paradise is hell for women, much as Islamic utopias on earth are nightmares for women. Muslim terrorists chant, you have life, we have death. The virgin who is the physical embodiment of the Islamic love of death. The death cult urges on Muslims to lust for death rather than for life. Muslim men are taught to despise life and to view marriage to Muslim women as a temporary expedient for the sake of the jihad. Life and family are a means to an end, and the end is death. The 90-foot tall transparent creature with visible bone marrow and none of the functions of life is a giant skeleton. The love the Muslim terrorists have for these virgins is a love for death. ISIS is recreating the Islamic paradise on earth by capturing and handing out girls of tender age to the jihadists. It forces them to take contraceptives and conduct forced abortions so that like the 72 virgins, the captured girls will never actually have children. It even conducts reconstruction surgery after the rapes so their victims will more closely resemble the promised Mohammedan eternal virgins of Islamic paradise. The Islamic state isn't just Islamic, it's a hellish attempt to create an Islamic heaven on earth. If you found this broadcast interesting, please subscribe to the YouTube channel for the Glasov Gang and visit the Glasov Gang online and help support the Glasov Gang to sponsor more episodes like this. Thank you and have a good night.